most students say that i want to be a back-end developer but when i ask them what exactly you should be learning 99 percent of the people go blank recently i gave an interview of an accenture and after working nearly for three and a half years in industry i came to know that what exactly company expect from a back-end developer it's not just about knowing java not just about knowing spring boot or building apis it's beyond that and the good news is in this video, I'm going to tell you exact roadmap that is required to become a Java developer in 2026. Companies expect Java, Spring Boot, Database, Security, Deployment and Production level skills. And I promise you, once you watch this video, you will have a crystal clear roadmap and the topics that you needed to become a, a good backend developer in 2026. Now, without any further ado, let's start the video. Now before we proceed with learning Spring Boot and building APIs, it becomes really necessary to know the basic fundamentals of Java because we know that Java is used throughout the backend development when we are choosing the Java backend developer roadmap. So to make it more easier, I have divided the Java into three different sections and that is Core Java, Advanced Java and New Features of Java. So let's check one by one which are the things that you should be thoroughly good at while preparing these three sections. Core Java. Now Core Java is a basic building block of the Java and it is very easy since it mainly deals with the basic concept and the syntax of Java. But also at the same time, don't just skip this part as it only deals with the syntax. Make sure that you are thoroughly familiar with concept like OOPS concept. Now most people study the OOPS concept in a theory and conceptual manner. But what I will recommend you, knowing the concept of OOPS is not just enough but make sure that you also have the hands-on experience of every single OOPS concept. Get to know when to use which OOPS concept, what is the difference between abstraction and interface, when to use interface and when to use abstraction. And also at the same time, make sure that you also know the real life example of every single OOPS concept. Now, once you become familiar with OOPS concept, there are certain things that you need to take care of. For example, static keyword, final keyword, try, cache, finally keywords. So you have to make sure that what are these keywords and how they internally works. The most important section of these part is exception handling because handling the exceptions becomes a lot more important when you're dealing with the production level projects. So get yourself familiar with what is checked exceptions, what is unchecked exceptions, how to handle these exceptions, what are the different ways to handle these exceptions. Now, once you become familiar with the core concept of Java, it's time to move a little bit of advanced to deal with the advanced Java. So in advanced Java, make sure that you are familiar with the concept like collections. Now collection itself is a big topic to deal with because it contains a lot of ready to use data structures, a set of interfaces and set of classes. Also at the same time, you should know when to use which collections, what is their internal working and what is the difference between each of them. For example, in interviews, most of the time it is asked what is the difference between map, hash map and concurrent hash map. What is the internal working of hash map? So make sure that for every single collection, whether it is list, set, map, you should know the internal working of this and you should also be familiar with what are the different static methods are there in order to apply the operations on this. Now, once you get familiar with the collections, now it's time to move a little bit of more advanced when you're dealing with the multi-threading system. Now, we know that the thread is basically the smallest individual part of the process and using multi-threading, a two or more tasks can be handled at the same time. So make sure that how we can convert a class or an object into the threads. So basically there are two methods called as a thread class and runnable interface. So know what their internal use is, when to use thread class, when to use runnable interface, which are the different methods are there which help us to convert the normal object into the threads. Now once you get familiar with the threads, the most important part what I will recommend you is a functional programming. So functional programming was introduced in Java 8 features, especially for each loop, stream API, parallel stream API, lambda expression, which is basically used to implement the functional interface. No matter what, you have to be a thoroughly good at these concepts because 99% of the time, it is always asked to write a program using stream API. So you should be thoroughly good at stream API. Let me tell you my experience, how I practice stream API. So what I used to do is, whichever the company I'm giving the interview of, I used simply used to go on a chat GPT and used to write, I have an interview for Accenture company. Give me the list of 10 questions so that I can practice stream API. 
so it will give me the list of 10 different questions and i used to practice daily 10 different questions to get familiar with functions and the use of stream api please don't skip stream api in no matter what now once you become familiar with this functional programming it's time to move towards the new features of java so make sure that you are knowing what is sealed class what is a record class what is virtual threads because nowadays the interviews are getting a bit tougher and tougher so there is a high probability that they can test you whether you are familiar with the latest versions of java the new features of java because most of the companies especially the banking sector always try to move towards the advanced features of java now before we jump on learning the spring boot understanding how wave works becomes a lot more important and if you don't know how wave works then spring boot and the backend development will feel like a magic so what i will suggest is before we start with the actual backend development understanding the basic building block of wave becomes a lot more important you should be thoroughly good at knowing the basic building blocks like what is the difference between the client and the server how does client interact with the server difference between cookies and session request and response and the most important thing that you should be thoroughly good at what are the different methods that is http methods are available to interact with the server like we know that there are different methods are available like get put post delete so make sure that you know when you will be using which method what is the working of those method now once you get familiar with these http methods let's move one step ahead knowing the status codes of every single response which is sent by the server so make sure that what is the status code says 200 400 404 and 500 now once you know this basic building block of the web now it's time to move into the ocean of a backend development spring and spring boot now this is the place where backend feels like a real backend but hey hold on still we haven't started with actual spring boot now see most of the people directly jump onto the spring boot but what i will recommend you is that don't start directly with the spring boot because Spring Boot does not give us any clarity about what is the internal working of the annotations which we are using. And the reason behind this is because we are directly using the annotation without knowing what's its use and internal implementation. Then if they ask us any question, then it becomes a lot more difficult for us to identify and answer those questions. So what I will recommend you is that before you start with the actual Spring Boot, always start with the Spring. And the reason behind this is because the spring, we need to manually configure every single thing. And when we try to manually configure these things, we will automatically come to know that, oh, this annotation, which is used in the spring boot is internally implementing these things only, right? So spring framework directly gives us a crystal clear idea about the internal working of the spring boot. Now, what are the things that you should be thoroughly good at while dealing with the spring framework? Now make sure that first of all you should be familiar with basic building blocks like what is spring framework and we know that there are certain terminologies on which spring framework basically works that is ioc which is inversion of control and dependency injection that is ioc is principal and dependency injection is the implementation of this ioc then make sure that you are familiar with beans that is the object which is managed and configured by the spring framework is what we call as a beans then learn about how to configure manual project in spring framework there are two ways that is by using xml and by using java based configurations now you should be familiar with structure of spring framework like what is controller service layer repository layer where does a request come from who is responsible to deliver the response to the client now once you get familiar with the spring framework you will come to know that there are a lot of disadvantage of using spring framework and those are everything we need to manually configure it and we don't have time right if you're trying to implement any new features go and have the manual configurations will you like it doing every time no so in order to overcome with these problems the new concept come into the picture which we call it as spring boot and now it's time to go and have some hands on spring boot because the annotation which we will be using in a spring boot you have already manually configured it so now you know the internal working of how does every single annotation used in the spring boot works so in spring boot again you should be familiar with what is the structured layer of spring boot application what are the things that makes it different from spring framework like in spring boot every single thing is internally auto configured like annotations internal tomcat server every single thing is auto configured we simply need to use the annotation get yourself familiar with at the rate component 
Adred component, Adred Spring Boot application, what is Spring Boot actuator, how does a Spring Boot internally works, and what happens when we start the Spring Boot applications. So these are the must do concepts while dealing with the Spring Boot. Now the real fun begins by building the RESTful APIs using Spring Boot. This section will help us to develop the system that can send and receive the request from the server. We know that the Spring Boot mainly follows a structured layer, that is a controller, service layer, repository layer and database. Now before we start building the RESTful APIs, there are certain methods that we should be really familiar with because the client cannot directly send the request to the server. There is a particular way which can be used for the communication between the client and the server and for those we need a different methods. So make sure that you are familiar with first of all at the rate REST controller annotation. But don't just learn what is REST controller. Also make sure what is the difference between a controller and REST controller. When to use controller and when to use REST controller. Now we came to know that how we can create our own controller. But what about a sending a request from the client to the server. So for that purpose we need a different methods. So make sure that you are familiar with different methods like put mapping, get mapping, delete mapping and post mapping. Now once you get familiar with these methods, there are certain 4 annotations that you should be thoroughly good at. That is at the rate request param, response body, request body. These are the different parameters or the annotations which will help us a lot while building the APIs. Now just see, I always say that knowing the concept does not always help us, but having the hands on will always help you. So to get more and more crystal clear in this building REST APIs and the REST controllers, I will always suggest you to build a normal REST controller. You can create your own REST controller like add, delete, show and update the users. Now once you build your APIs, don't trust it blindly until unless you don't test it. To test this API, you can use the tools like Postman which will help us to test every single API whether they are hitting it correctly or not. Now, once you build your APIs, don't you think so that keeping our data in memory is not always good because we need to store it permanently. And that's what a database comes into the picture. Now, let me tell you one harsh truth. You can build a best RESTful APIs using Spring Boot in a whole world. But if our APIs don't have the database to store the data permanently, your backend system is just like a toy. Almost every single application, every single company saves the data of every user which are trying to visit their application. Let's take an example of Amazon, Swiggy, Zomato. They store our data permanently in their database. Now, to get familiar with this database, we don't need to learn 7 different types of databases. Getting familiar with one database is good enough. Either it is Oracle, MySQL or PostgreSQL. But I will highly recommend you, if you are having the backend development using Java Spring Boot, it is always better to learn PostgreSQL database because for microservices, it is more essential and easy to use. Now, while dealing with the database, first thing you should be thoroughly good at knowing the basics of every single SQL queries. What is DDL, DML and DCL, especially joins and aggregate functions, where clause, having clause, when to use where clause, when to use having clause. And also at the same time, have some hands-on experience writing queries, optimizing queries. Now, once you get familiar with these SQL queries, what exactly happen is you are getting familiar with writing the optimized and well versed SQL queries. But there's one catch. We cannot write these SQL queries directly into our Spring Boot application. Of course, we can write it, but always writing these direct straightforward SQL queries make our application clumsy and complicated. So, to avoid this writing SQL queries, there is one concept in a Spring Boot called as a ORM, that is Object to Relational Mapping. Automatically, your class and the object get mapped to the relational database, whichever the database you are using. In order to implement this ORM, there are different methods are available that we have the Spring Data JPA, we have the Hibernate as well. So, what it actually does is, whichever the class which you are creating, directly it is get converted into the relational database table. Now, we don't need to write the SQL queries, right? So make sure with the concept like what is Spring Data, JPA, what is Hibernate and the most and the useful question that is always asked in the interview that is tell me the steps that can be used to create and connect your Spring Boot application to the database using Spring Data JPA.
now once you get familiar with database now you are able to store and retrieve the data of the user permanently into the database now if you think that learning spring boot and building restful apis will help you to crack any interview then you are about to get rejected from every interview you will give because the real back end journey mainly begins after learning spring boot and building restful apis now it's time to think about securing your application authentication authorizations health check logging and health metrics checking these are the things which will help us to keep our application more secured and long running without a point of failure so make sure that there is one concept in spring boot that you should be thoroughly good at which is called as a spring boot security it will help us to deal with the jwd token how to secure your applications how to authorize and authenticate the user which is trying to log into your application now once you get familiar with this security health check metrics and authentication and authorization you can learn some advanced concept that will help you a lot in the whole back end development career and those are try to learn a design pattern we know that there are three types of design patterns called as creational design pattern structural design pattern and behavioral design pattern also have some hands on experience on microservices because nowadays microservices are booming especially in a banking sector check what is the difference between microservice architectures and monolithic architecture when to use monolithic and when to use microservice architecture now you can learn some streaming data applications like kafka rabbit mq because nowadays companies are trying to build the system that are works on a distributed system as well they don't want to have the centralized system they want to have a decentralized system that is spread across different system to keep their application running every now and then now i hope so that you have got the clear idea about which are the must do concept you should be good at while dealing with the back end development engineering interview i hope this video has completely helped you just write a back end road map in the comment section and i will share you a complete pdf with detailed notes and the topic that you should be preparing for any back end development interview and if you are new to our channel don't forget to like share and subscribe the channel keep grinding till then see you in the next video